This boat's taken the Mediterranean day boat concept and they've just made it better. So she's a competitor to boats like the Pardo 43, Invictus TT 420, you could throw the Cranchy uh, 46 in there as well, and, and even the Tiara, they've got a 43 that I've seen that's in this style. But what I think Fjord are doing with this model is I reckon they're focusing on possibly a lot of you and definitely a lot of me and my mates who are focusing on the hotter climates. because. Those of us in the hotter climates, we boat all year round, therefore our boats are in the water 12 months of the year. So having outboards on the back makes a lot of sense for us. So come on out the back here and we actually will start at the back of the boat because this is the really special thing about this model, the Fjord 41 XP. There is another model on the same hull, it's called the Fjord 41 XL. I've already tested that boat. That's also on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description below. But what they have quite cleverly done with this model is mated it with the outboards, given us an incredible amount of options in terms of the storage space. And now we have a hot weather suitable boat. It's going to be suitable for all climates. The other thing that's fantastic about this boat is the speed capabilities, which we did not have on the other model because of the stern drives. We can do 50 miles an hour top speed on this boat. We can cruise in our high 30s, low 40s. So that's something special. If you want to go from A to B and you just want to get there and have an awesome platform with you and 14 mates, which this boat is rated to, 14 people, you can do that. That's what I love about this concept. There's a whole lot more that I love about this concept and I'm going to keep talking about that and we'll point it out in as much detail as we can because this is the walkthrough and because I'm Dan Jones and you're watching Dan's Boat Life, that means we're going driving. So at the end of this video, we're going to go for a burn. It's a great day out there. The guys from Haulover or that ca the, the camera crew at Haulover, they also were filming us so you'll have to have a look on Wavy Boats, that's what they're called. Uh, we did have a, a bit of a laugh before and cruising around enjoying ourselves so why not so let me just describe the first difference if you have come from the 41 xl video you're going to be familiar with the massive platform out the back which we now sacrifice a little bit to fit these beautiful engines of 1200 horsepower so you still have quite a amount of space so i'm walking that's like two steps just there to operate to use this platform you can actually use it as a run and jump spot and we have a proper swim ladder this one's optional and then a pull out swim ladder which is also a bit of a safety ladder on the starboard side i'll, I'll cut to some drone shots so you can see that um, the other thing we have this pass through uh, between or in front of the motors just remember you do have to unlatch this there's two latches on either side and haul it up if you're going to trim the engines fully out of the water if you're going to come up to a beach like this you can just do 40 percent trim like we have now and the props clear the hull so you can come into the shallow water from an operational perspective they're fine but you just need to do full trim if you're going to go uh at the end of the day and hoist the motors so there's a lot to talk about here i'm going to start on the starboard side and we'll work our way around this little latch here gives us access into the shore power and we also have an engine flush system just in here so that will cycle through one engine and then the other and flush the motors should you need be this latch here and the same one on the other side gives us access into a huge awesome epic garage i'm going to come back to that at the end so keep watching um, we've got our kid and doggy doors typical fjord stuff solid big stainless chunky doors no one's going past those and behind them we have facility to store shore power cables or ropes because you've got these two little hooks here works well for that pop-up cleats with rope protectors just here and we're going for the flexi teak all the way around so again hot climates very suitable you can go for natural teak as well so if that's important to you yes they can still do it 
Um, I just need to point out the paint job. I freaking love it. This orange, it just looks so hot. And with the windscreen on this one, another option that I'm gonna to talk to you about in a second, it really stands out. I, when I first heard they were doing orange boat, I was like, oh, how's that gonna work? And then when I saw it, I was like, crikey, that is the sexiest thing I've seen all year. It really does stand out in a nice way, put it that way. So in here, we've got um, coolant for the gen set. Uh, this is fuel tank. We've got two tanks on either side, and then we've got uh, water in, breather just here, and then diesel in because we have a diesel gen set on this one we've got a stabilizer we've got a diesel gen set she's fully loaded this boat um, in terms of refrigeration i'm just near one right now we've actually got five fridges on deck so these are the pull out fridges and there's going to be four of these so there's another one here and same again on the other side so from a comfort perspective with your mates nobody is ever far from a drink the other thing is the design of these tables if you are here and you need to go to the dunny <laughs> you can just do that and move your way out you've got a few options because you know unless the table's fully loaded with eight people which it could be it just gives you a little bit of uh moving around capability if you need to get up and move around um, we've got drink holders one two three four here and here and these tables as you may have already just noticed will fully enclose and create a whole big lunch table so now picture yourself eight friends sitting around the table under the shade that's going to be my next big point about this boat guys so many of these midday boats they do sexy t-tops and they don't do practical t-tops well i'm from australia and we get skin cancer and the sun's really hot and it's kind of hot here too in florida so it's really useful having a full beam roof like this so pay attention to how far out this roof comes look at the overhang and all the way across here you guys are going to be protected we still have a light coming through because we have heavily tinted glass but you're not going to burn your face off in the middle of the day and then we have this optional shore shade which is quite good looking because it's got the fiberglass component that then seals in and then that protects everyone. So people from the sun lounge to the seats can all be in the shade. The other thing that they have thought about, this is, this is the vibe that I'm getting. It's the German practicality thrown into the sexiness of a med day boat. You get so many Italian day boats, which are really sexy, but sometimes they lack a little bit on the practicality. And the vibe that I always get with Fjord is, they haven't forgotten about the operational side of the boat because we've got these vertical poles which just go in here to here so you can still have this sunshade out and drive the boat at speed so that's just another thing to keep your life a little bit more simple from an operational perspective so we've got the sun lounge here four ladies or guys or whoever you like can really enjoy themselves on the back here even more but if you need more space you can do that you can double the size of your sun lounge virtually. You can also, if you want to have a nap, actually just spin this around from memory and do it the other way. Just when the table's down is what I'm trying to point out because that leads me to my next point. These tables are electrically operated. So they will go up and down and then we can turn this into an even larger sunbed next thing if you're transiting so if you're going to the bahamas you are oh, what's that 60 nautical miles something like that so you might be out there for two hours you can you might enjoy facing forward so they can do that as well so the options are many i just think the multi-functional aspect of this layout really lends itself to epic days on the water and this roof just means that everyone is going to stay out and enjoy themselves for a longer amount of time as opposed to getting super super sunburnt. So let's cover off this port side because there is actually more to talk about. Um, this is just a manual bilge pump just in here. That's the other fuel tank in same place as on the starboard side but underneath me we've got a huge storage latch. So this is where you're going to put all the covers that go over these cushions here 
here and forward. So you have individual covers. The reason why you don't have one big massive cover is imagine trying to do that on a windy day. It's gonna be impossible. So these covers have been designed to be put in place by one person. So if you're gonna operate this boat and your friends are maybe a little bit useless or don't wanna get involved, that's okay. They've thought about that. So all of that can be stored in here. And then our hot and cold swim shower, which is full stainless steel, high quality job is just stored in here logically because it's next to the swim ladder that we spoke about before so that's all really really cool stuff as we make our way forward we do actually have somewhere to grab onto this is not the sort of boat that rocks around too much she's quite beamy she's like 13 foot a little bit over 13 foot of beam so um, there's a lot of boat, low center of gravity, not too much weight aloft. So she doesn't want to rock around too much. As you can see, we're floating right now. But if you are offshore, perhaps, as I know people do in this part of the world, you can just activate the quick gyro off the Jenny and keep the thing stable. So that is a possibility. Got the JL audio and you're going to see these flash mounted. Uh, these are the high quality speakers. And then there's subwoofers as we make our way forward, which I'm going to point out but there's, there's more to talk about before I get there. I mentioned we have these beautiful skylights which are tinted, and that is knocking out some of the harshness of the sun, but keeping this area quite comfortable. We also have mood lighting. So can you see this here? Hopefully you can see that on the camera. That gives you a little bit of mood lighting. But then if you want to do a barbie um, or some cooking, we actually have down lighting in sensible places because boom, boom, this is where you're gonna operate. So at the moment, this is a cutting board, Corian bench top with a drain. You can do an optional gas barbie in here if that's, that's your vibe. I know a lot of Aussies are gonna love that. Underneath, we have our fifth fridge. It's still got the plastic on it, she's a new boat. Um, so that's a pull-out fridge, a bigger one, and then the other four fridges are all uh, draw fridges, which all your guests can reach without having to get up. And then this area here is your cooking station. So we got our uh, sink, that is a deep stainless steel sink. We also have a drain on the side. And then on this Corian bench top, this is induction. So just, just come in close and have a look at that. See how that's flat, guys? So cleaning this up is gonna be really easy because we've got a drain around the side, which goes to, a gutter that goes to the drain is what I'm trying to say. So you could just get all the muck off it and put it into there and, drain it away. So that's quite a convenient setup. You got your tap just there and you can even just throw things in the sink before you want to wash them if need be because it's quite a deep sink. Underneath here, I've been using it as shoe storage. You do whatever you like, but shoes seem to, or thongs seem to go pretty well in there. And you got a little bit more storage just in there for other knickknacks, which then leads me to the starboard side. We have our control panel for all the features up on deck. So we've got Bimini control here, the cockpit tables up and down, ambient light. So what that means is these deck lights all the way around, uh, we actually can change the color of those. So we have um, the mood light up top, we have the deck lights down below, they will change color. Um, they're called courtesy lights. Then we've got T-top ambient light, T-top spotlights, which means down lights and underwater lights as well. Um, these are the Fjord fenders. Um, there's three stored on each side and there's even storage for more fenders. Um, I should have put that somewhere before I turn the camera on, shouldn't I? There's even storage for more fenders in that place uh, underneath the sun lounge aft. But come and have a look at the dash before we do that. So this is another thing I really like about this boat. It's simple, it's elegant but it's functional back to the germans once again so look at this simrad display we've gone to the glass screen so this is super easy to clean don't worry about getting any salt water on this because they're behind one big panel of glass if you want bigger screens you can do that that's then two individual screens and you're not going to have the flat screen glass so you do you whatever suits you this molding design here we have, we have the carbon fiber grab handle just here but on starboard we've got the operation for the quick uh for the anchor up and down so that gives you a, a chain counter and this is the gyro just here and this is going to be storage for drink bottles 
and phones because you've got a little bit of space underneath there. And then you've got your other uh, operational systems just here, your Humphrey stabilizers here, your key starts out of the way of your knees. Just pay attention to that because some boats mount the keys in a uh, you know, not the most intelligent position. You, you can accidentally turn them off with your leg. Not the case on this Fjord. We have the adjustable wheel just here, the new Mercury throttle set in a good position for ergonomics for long distance driving but also for active driving. If you want to see that, separate video, link to that at the end of, of this demonstration. And we have the joystick central forward of the throttle. That's a logical place to put it. More storage for drink bottles and phones. These are drained. So if you had water somehow make its way in here, it's not going to drown your phones because it is drained. We've got the digital diagnostics for the Mercury just here. And we've got a keypad for the Simrad on port to the helm just there but these are touch screen it's just in case you got wet or fat fingers you can do that as well one windscreen wiper in the middle operated just next to the helm like so now before i get actually no, i'll just show you on this seat um these are a real upgrade from the early fjords fjord they actually invented the concept of the Mediterranean style day boat. There were a few other styles out there way back in the day, but Fjord took it to the mass market. And this look that we have really was created and brought to the world by Fjord. And they had an earlier style of seat, which was cool, you know, and it, it, it did the job, but it was nowhere near as good as this one because they used to get stuck. They were uh, these flip down seats, which had a very clever mechanism. They over Germanized it, I think, in the early ones. Now this is just sensible, simple and operational. So I like that. So we've got dual function. You can step on there and there, get some height and back support or as you saw me before, you can just flip it down like so. And you've also got the drop down armrests. And on the driver's side, you have double armrests there and rear. Actually, sorry, they all have double armrests. So there you go. So very comfortable, good amount of visibility. We've got foot rests for everyone and we have drains as well. So no water is making its way down below, but we're, we're not there yet. There's so much more to talk about because I want you to pay attention to this windscreen now, guys. This is really sexy. So look through the glass and see if you see any distortion because sometimes with curved glass, uh, it can ruin your visibility on the corners. This one to me looked really good. I didn't have any issues. And also these side pillars are located in such a fashion that from the driver's perspective, you have this wonder, wonderful view here and here, and then really no loss of visibility to the sides either. I also want you to note that the roof design comes up here like this. So when the boat's healing, uh, or, you know, port or starboard, when ordinarily the roof is going to dip down and cut out your visibility, which can make it a little bit unsafe, it doesn't happen on this one for the reason of this the design that's cuts in and goes up, but also it's high, it's quite high. So I'm 5'7", and at the helm, I <laughs> can't actually touch the glass. So there's a lot of rooms, if you're tall, it's not a problem. But this windscreen, good visibility, nice styling, but it is open at the top. So you need to decide where you're gonna be using uh, the boat because you don't have to have this opening. You can actually have fully enclosed glass all the way to the top if you choose. So that, that obviously means no wind at the dash and you've got wind coming through on the side. So if you're in Queensland or if you're in Florida, you might prefer this open. Uh, or if you're worried about lots of rain showers coming down and affecting your day, then you might prefer the enclosed glass. Really, you do you, it's, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, but I think we've covered all that. Come on forward, let's go and have a look at the bow now because it's just equally gorgeous. You've got multiple zones here from everything we saw on the back and the middle of the boat and wait till we get downstairs. We've kind of replicated it up here because a large number of people, if you choose uh, and you want to come and enjoy a sunset, for example, this could be quite a nice place to do it because you can, as I am right now, sit on these wide gunnels. You've got plenty of space. You can enjoy this sun lounge here. It's got a built-in headrest 
we got the drink holders. There is actually a, an opening window or escape hatch underneath us just there. And then from an operational perspective, we're now higher so I can reach the sides if I need to hang a fender. For example, these are our fender hanging hooks just here and here, and they're dotted all the way around. And we've also got entertainment forward with these speakers as well. Pop-up cleats as we saw before, and the anchor operation, um, it's all done from the helm, but you can appreciate the uh, engineering just here. So what happens with this particular design is that windlass releases the pressure and then the, the bow roller goes forward and it actually protrudes forward of the boat and it's a very sensible system. I've used it before in Sydney and we'll do it again uh, this weekend for the shoot. It's a way to keep the bow sexy, but then give you a sensible and easy to operate anchoring system. This is the uh, red and green lights just here. We've got some windows going downstairs, uh, but let's have a look at the roof before we make our way um, downstairs. And actually, before I get there, so can't forget, this is gonna be a super awesome super yacht tender for some of you. Um, whether you want to, whether you have a sailing super yacht or a motor super yacht, um, you could tow a fjord quite well. I uh, know a lot of people do, or you can run it with crew as a chase boat. So if you've got a high dock or just a high boat, you've got these double steps that flip out here and they're held in place with magnets. So that's another way to board people on and off. And from a, a crew perspective, if you are crew watching this, this is the kind of boat that you can run guests quite easily because you're in the middle. It's nice big flat decks. You can see every one and you can see all points on the boat. So if you're boarding people on and off and you need a stable platform for your guests to get safely from the mothership to the boat, this is definitely a boat that will do that. And many of many, many fjords are already in that operation uh, you know, in, in Europe and I assume they are in the States. And, if they're not, well, you need to have a look at one of these because they work very well in that function. Um, so let's just check out the roof. So some of you might want to put boards up here. I don't see why you would because you've got so much storage downstairs, but um, just pay attention to the all around white light. If you needed to um, get under a bridge, they could do a retrofit here in America uh, for an electric fold down one. So if that was a concern to you, can be resolved. We see the radar, air horn, navigation lights, aft, uh, GPS aerials, all pretty stock standard stuff. Pop-up midship cleats, and I think I pointed out before, but I'll just run or touch on it again. These grab handles all the way around are very, very convenient. Now, I gotta show you this super awesome garage because it really does change the whole game for a lot of you. So guys, I deliberately sat down in here because this space is ginormous. I actually have a couple of super yacht fenders uh, on my starboard side. I've got the C-Bob just here. That's the cushion, which goes over the tables in the cockpit area. And you know, this just feels like another cabin. It's massive. So I just want you to think about what you could do with a space like this in terms of all your toys to get them in here and out of the way. And then notice how this hatch opens like this. Just deploy the toys in the water to start your day. That's the awesome thing that we can achieve without boards. And they've managed to design this boat in a sensible enough way that the weight distribution works out perfectly, which we'll see in the test drive. But before we get there, um, uh, maybe just pass me the camera, Udo, and I'll bring you guys down with me and just show you what you can see. We've got a little bit of power distribution and blowers. Um, there we got some electronics just there. Heaps and heaps of space. I'm standing on checker plate, which is on hinges. Then you go through this Lumar hatch into the technical space. So that, my friends, is it Fisher Panda Gen set? Then you've got the quick gyro just there. We got batteries on port making our way up. Look how easily accessible all of that is. Then we've got more power distribution, um, wiring loom, and then hot water cylinder on starboard. But just see how spacious that is. 
and you've even got another hatch underneath the cockpit table to access that and it's all really well insulated as a soundproofing from there into the cabins which we'll go and have a look at right now so guys this is um one of the exciting things about this boat we have a beautiful open plan interior that could sleep a whole family or a couple superbly comfortably but we also have options so what you're looking at looking at right now is one option of this um, uh, layout interior i want you to pay attention to how they've done this beautiful gold wrapping around the darker textures uh, complementing the lights but then have a look up here check out these windows so you have all of this natural light coming through we've got two opening hatches one forward one aft facing so you can get natural ventilation but it is also air conditioned and then you've got these ocean air blinds which pop down and we've also got these overhead ones so you can have full block out with this or you could just um, dim the light with this one so that gives you the options it'll also work as a bug catcher as well so um, there's more going on there's more going on we've got these beautiful big hole windows which just give you these wonderful pictures i now know what these uh, four-legged animals are uh, after the other day they're raccoons i had no idea what those bloody things were when i looked at it the other day and it gave me a fright uh, but apparently they're not deadly so they just like to have a go at your rubbish bin is what i'm told so um, i just assume every living animal that i see is deadly until i am told otherwise that's generally the case back home um, so, but just in here, we have a little uh, phone charging spot on both port and starboard right next to the bed. We've got the light switch so you don't have to leave bed when you want to switch off the lights. Those um, reading lights, they actually have USB uh, uh, connectors underneath so you can also charge items. I'm actually doing that right now with my drone batteries. We've got the air conditioning control on starboard. We've got 110 volt both on port and starboard and then you both have an equal amount of space to step out of bed so what does that mean if you need to go to the loo in the middle of the night you don't have to roll over your partner that's why this design of bed is really good for a couple we've also got um, a big drawer underneath here for all your bedding and then you have an equal amount of space on port and starboard for hanging items and a couple of shelves just there so super super nice um, and very functional, probably the best layout for a couple, maybe, uh, because there is another option. Where I am right about here, you can actually have sliding doors and turn this into a cabin just here. So you, you can do full open plan, or you can do two sliding doors to turn this into a private cabin. Then, uh, why don't you come over here, Udo, and look back at me. There's a couple of options for this space. So right now, we've got this very lovely upholstery, and it's a little bit of a hangout lounge, and I can look out the window. This would be a great place to come down and read a book in the air conditioning if you choose. I've got the fridge right underneath my feet just here. But there's more you can also do like a little mini bar kitchenette area in here or uh, and or I should say there's the option to have a crew toilet so a lot of you are probably going to consider towing this boat behind your big boat and if you want to have a toilet for the crew because that's your toilet which we're going to look at in just a sec they've catered to that so it's kind of cool windows up here a little bit of storage in here more 110 volt just there your main battery operation is in here inverter and all your boat switches are just in here but come on and have a look at the proper loo this is really a step up for fjords from the past in terms of the styling and the quality look at that gold being carried through we've got the electric toilet look at the basin isn't that sexy We've got the mirror just there. I'm gonna stand in now for perspective, guys. I'm standing on some teak just here. I've got the closing uh, shower door just here and this Corian finish that just goes up and down here with a really nice tapware just here and here. And I have a full rain head shower above me with the inbuilt light. So it's, it's very nice. And me at five foot seven, I've got plenty of space. How tall are you? Udo? You're six foot. Six two. You're six two and you're standing up. You've got, you've got space above your head. 
So, so if you're tall guys, you're not gonna have a problem. That's, that's one of the things that I, I really note about this German brand. They, they're catering to the bigger people in the way they design from the doorways to the roof height to the T-top height, you're not struggling for space. So coming on down here into the midships cabin. So if you were tall, this is probably not gonna be your cabin, this will be the kids cabin. Um, just have a little appreciation of this. You can hear the air conditioning going. I've got the generator on right now, guys. So we've got the air con and the generator operational. And that's what you hear. So it's quite pleasant and it's obviously a little bit better further forward. Light switch just there, opening windows here not opening they are windows but with blinds so you can see out there and there and the bed it's actually huge and if you just have a look at me here you can kind of kick back here and do your thing if you wish obviously it's designed to go forward and aft but this is also another nice way to relax and and look at the curvature of the timber and the finish up against the bulkhead here it's all quite smartly done a little bit of storage reading lights more charging points uh, aircon control and we've got some drawers for more storage up ahead and the final thing worth pointing out which um, you may not have noticed because I was sitting down I'm just gonna stand up <laughs> they, they've allowed for that so you can actually stand up in here and get dressed because they've had this little cutout above this seat with one two three windows we're actually below the helm right now so someone Five nine, I'd say, would be okay because I've got a couple of inches above my five seven height, um, and you're still going to be catered to, so it, it's pretty cool. Come on upstairs, let's go wrap this video. So that's the Fjord Forty One XP, ladies and gentlemen. Um, tell me what you think about this boat. Um, do you like the concept of not having to bother about a tender and being able to come straight up to the beach like you can now? Is the faster cruising speeds important to you? Do you like the easier serviceability of outboards or don't you? Would you prefer a diesel? Let me know in the comments below. I am genuinely interested. Um, I think uh, from a hot, coming from a hot weather climate, being in a hot climate right here, I think this thing is absolutely perfect for a place like this because of the sun protection, because of this practical nature. And let's face it, it's a gorgeous boat. So if you want something good looking, if you want something to be proud of, that's certainly the Fjord 41 XP. So if you like the look and you want to see how it drives, we're doing that right now and it's really fun. <laughs> Tell you right now. So click on the link coming up on the screen right now. That's a separate video to this one. Don't forget to subscribe, support the Patreon. My name's Dan Jones. Thanks so much, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.